So in this video, I'm going to talk about how to determine between an SN1 and an SN2 reaction. So essentially, how you can identify whether something is going to be an SN1 reaction or an SN2 reaction. And so the first step, the first thing we're going to look at is the substrate. So we'll list that as number one and draw that around there. So you have to identify whether the substrate is primary, secondary, or tertiary. And so we're primarily just going to focus on alkyl groups because um, the allylic and benzylic groups we're going to talk about later on. But they do factor into determining whether something's SN1 or SN2. But for now, we're just going to consider alkyl groups. And so if it's a primary alkyl group, remember that it only has the carbon, I mean, only has another bond to one other carbon. And so there's a lot of room for the nucleophile to come in and attack. And so as a result, if it's a primary alkyl group, it's going to undergo an SN2 reaction. On the other hand, if you have a tertiary alkyl group, remember that the tertiary alkyl group, it hinders the SN2 attack. And so the SN2 attack is not going to occur. But one thing that a tertiary alkyl group is good at is um, it allows the carbocation of an SN1 reaction to be stabilized. So if you have a tertiary alkyl group for your substrate, you're going to have an SN1 reaction right there. Now you might ask, well, what happens if you have a secondary alkyl group? Well, with a secondary alkyl group and a few other things, let me just write them. Sorry about the handwriting. It's a little crammed, I know. But um, so with the substrate, if you have either a secondary alkyl group or mostly we're going to be talking about the secondary alkyl group, but if you also have a primary or a secondary allylic or a primary and secondary benzylic group, then you're going to go on to the next thing, which is to determine if your nucleophile is strong. And so if you have a strong nucleophile, which is going to be an anionic nucleophile, and I just abbreviated nucleophile as NU. So if you have an anionic nucleophile, it's going to be strong, and it's going to undergo an SN2 reaction. On the other hand, if you have a neutral nucleophile, which would mean it's not a strong nucleophile, um, it's going to undergo an SN1 reaction. And then if you're still not sure at this step, which is very rare, so let me write, if you're still not clear at this step, then you're going to look at the solvent if they even give you the solvent. So for solvents, we talked about in a previous video, if you have a polar aprotic solvent, such as acetone, for example, so polar aprotic solvents are going to give you an SN2 reaction, while a polar protic solvent, such as water or alcohol, is going to give you an SN1 reaction. And so pretty much if you just follow this flow chart, you can determine between SN1 and SN2. So you want to first look at the substrate, determine what kind of alkyl group it is, and then if that doesn't help you um, clarify whether it's SN1 or SN2, then you go look at the nucleophile, and then if you're still not clear, you look at the solvent, if they even give you the solvent, which a lot of problems won't give you. And so I hope this video helped you determine essentially between whether something's going to be SN1 or SN2. If it helped you, please give it a like and share it with your friends.